Hello, hope everyone's doing well today. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, uh, we did West of Lovely yesterday, so it means uh, Phoenix Wright uh, today. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. And my fucking Discord hasn't gone off. But whatever. In the day two investigation. Maya. Hey, Nick, it's you. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I, I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Uh, okay. Let's stop by the law office and see what happens. Well, Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Well, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. There are fewer than there were here than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. Haven't seen Larry at all around at all today. Today at all. Probably off paying uh, through the nose on a date with the lovely Keonce. Oh, crap. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. Trial today, it er. Yes? What about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Miss Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks. Second of Gumshoe? Anything with strategy Von Karma's planning for tomorrow. It's not like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Alright, he said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. I, I don't even know why we need a cutscene for that. I was wondering who that other cutscene was. Uh, who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to develop, divulge that information. Right. Alright, I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I've never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime that way he does, and him becoming a prosecutor, and him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one. 15 years ago, when he saw his father's shot before his very eyes, he still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Fey. Huh? She's not on bail yet? That's strange. I told him to let her go as soon as they had the report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it wasn't for her. Seeing her get dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice Edgeworth. He's really grateful for what she... What what she did, you know? I'm gonna head back to the station. I'll get that report on Maya and get her out as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Edgeworth, Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. Oh, wow. 
What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful for her what she did. Alright, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. All this camera is staring out of the lake as usual. Even a novice like me can tell that camera must cost a pretty penny. I hope she doesn't leave it out here to get stolen. Finally the leveler went fucking through. Looks like the boat rental shop is closed today, too. Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because of the murder. There's some boats floating into the dock. The murder took place in a boat from this dock. Apparently the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. This thing still fucking horrifies me. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? Objectin. How's it going, Rose? He's a live wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? Same as usual? Ah, okay. I bet he couldn't help them build out the case against Edgeworth. Seriously? Hey, Nick, you finally came. They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go. Free at last, eh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. What if I go back? Nope. There aren't many cops around today, are there? Probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's Lada. Y'all really did it today. What did we do now? No, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realize that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lada. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? I hope someone has made a mod for this that can change the music. Makes the music not change or stop when you make the right choice. Honestly, I kind of like that. This as an indicator. It's like, oh yeah, you already you already messed up. Like so, I know. I was like, oh yeah, what? Instantly, instantly start thinking more. What do you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd been a witness, even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced my hat myself I had though. I'm sorry. I know I caused you a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing. Yeah, I sure, I sure know that now. I'll be, uh, I'll be fine. No, I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Right. I mean, the first time you witness a murder. What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure, the trial's only st uh, stroking the flames of the Gordy fever. 
I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to start. Alright, Lada, you go, girl. I wish I could be an investi investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit mating training first. Lada, what did you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see... Actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Kummer didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information doesn't come cheap, my friend. Uh... Hey. I see thinking, my how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? <laughs> well, what's it gonna be? We gonna deal or not? What do we do, Nick? Sure. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Something from MatPat called the Dark Seekers of Power Wash Simulator is on my recommended. What? Now the dude's just trying to scrape. His, his time on YouTube is done. I think. There comes a lifespan of every YouTuber, and I think his is coming up soon. Especially if you're scraping. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gertie. Oh, whoa. Gertie? But Gertie doesn't, I mean, Gertie might not exist. Then bring me proof that it shows you do don't. His life on YouTube is theorizing about horror games? But Power Wash Simulator is not a horror game. That's the problem. I'm saying is like when I say when I say life on YouTube, I mean like duration of fame. Like think about uh, Epic Meal Time. That used to be like the hot shit, but nowadays people really don't talk about it much anymore. Uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You saw you see something? Y'all come to me first. Got it? Okay. Right. See y'all later. Okay, Nick, let's get hunting. Uh, hunting? You don't seriously mean Gertie? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gertie for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay, and how exactly do we search for a mask? Make believe monster. You remember that when the most popular song on YouTube Reddit was Revenge by Captain Sparkles? Like, for about two months, and then it, I think it switched to something else. Maybe we can find a monster uh, myth specialist. The internet is a strange. It is, yeah. What's that? The Steel Samurai, Nick. Yo, Maya. Larry. What the heck is that? Oh, was my girl Keonce's idea. She was all. If you put, if you like, put this here, it would be like really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow, that's really impressive. She could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show's finished now, so she got it for free. Right. Yo, Nick. What happened with it? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh. Hey, Larry, did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think it was ever like that in school. 
No? Really? Oh, well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. When the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. My mic was not facing towards me. Hey, Larry. Why did you get that big thing? Huh? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Ah! Oh, right. The compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's a little unit uh, by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. And here I thought you'd inflate it by yourself. Doesn't that Steel Samurai look a little out of place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this Steel Samurai just doesn't work for me. Oh, really? It looks pretty well made to me. Hmm. Still a novice, aren't you, uh, Nick? Really? Shoe connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. The Steel Samurai Balloon is a killer, yeah. The uh, Steel Samurai fans are obviously a league of their own. What's this machine? That? That's a compressor. I used to fill up the balloon there with air. Oh, neat. I just got it repaired yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. Hey, y'all. Well, y'all find anything about Gertie? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at night time. It is a little chilly. I... I think I have to sneeze. Well, no you don't. No sneezing. Uh-oh. Lada's gonna tear her a fucking new asshole. I told y'all no sneezing. See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. They trigger one of those Von Karma finger snaps right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry is nice, but what about what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. Eh. It was at this moment she knew. She fucked up. I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Just to find a serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell, tell us that, at least. Like I said, I'll trade him for the dirt on Gertie. What are you going to do if Gertie doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investment photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. I fucking love it. I love UFOs. Uh, UFO. Anyways, if I can't get uh, a career making photo this time around, that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Huh, so you really are a university student. Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Why isn't that checked off? It's 
It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Oh, the murder on the lake and all. They're probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. The only thing more confusing than incomprehensible Tumblr bullshit is the pointless arguments. Uh... I don't... You can't say just Reddit, though, because Tumblr does arguments as well. Now, I'm not saying, like, Reddit's not the wrong, mind you. I'm just saying, like, both are to blame. Looks like Edgeworth isn't questioning. Let's come back later. Guess so. Tumblr specializes in making themselves look cringe by making comprehensible bullshit to piece be piss people off. But is it... Uh, I, I don't know how to word this. Hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait. You didn't go and do something that's going to hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. What do you mean again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. Love you to bits, Gumshoe. How is the investigation proceeding? It's not really. We have another meeting coming up. They better arrest that steel samurai balloon for the murder. It's clearly the murderer. Yeah. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. And the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edward never, never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag it out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, doesn't look good, pal. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gertie? The monster down at Grid Lake? Not personally, no. <laughs> well, we're looking for it. They better explain this DL6 incident. I'm sure they will. Oh. Are you out of your mind? Yeek. You got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh. Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lotta. Nick, they're try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid in your search for Gertie. Huh? I'll, I'll only need one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take every, which, whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Hold now everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. Missile? Showing out the people must be commonplace in the office as the guy is still staring at his monitor. Either that or it's an incredible game of solitaire. He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile, missile, here boy. Aw. Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us how? Next secret number number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. 
Detective Gumshoe. We're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? You never know until you try, pal. Okay, this next one's the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by your choices. This is your number weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe. We're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to fight it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know, it might have been eating soda cans. That's true with how, how people throw shit away. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either, for the totally opposite reason. I suppose I can't hurt, hurt to borrow each one of them. I'll borrow the fishing pole. Can we borrow that flimsy looking fishing pole? Sure thing, pal. Over it breaks, be sure to dispose of it properly, okay? Uh, right. Fishing pole, uh, borrowed from Detective Pump Shoe. No, you can't catch many fish in this lake. I'm not after small fry. I'm after the biggest fry of them all. Gertie. You really gonna try to fish out a monster? To save Edgeworth, yes. That brings a tear to my eye in more ways than one. Okay, Nick, this looks like a good spot. A good spot for what? Time to do some fishing. She's serious. Um, what are you gonna use for bait? Oh. Yeah, oh. Hmm. I figured something like this would happen. We should have brought Miss along with us too. At least then we'd have bait. Oh, that's fucking dark. Holy shit. Nick, how could you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, that... That... Fucking... Took... Fucking... Holy shit. Hmm. Some jokes are better left untold. Oof, she hit me. Okay, watch this, Nick. Just try not to reel in empty, any empty cans or, or boots, okay? Here we go. Back my leg. I got distracted. Even what? Did, what even did Phoenix say? He said using the dog as bait. <laughs> we should have brought the dog along with us. At least then we'd have uh, bait for fishing. What are you doing? Sorry, Lada. Don't tell me y'all are on some film company's payroll. Nick Bayer. My poor, poor wallet. Are we allowed to throw protagonist in a lake? No. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Hmm? Yeah, sure, pal. I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. I'll take your pick. Which will it be? Uh, dog. Can we borrow a missile? Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. Woof! He's so cute. Oh boy. Canine unit missile board from Detective Gumshoe. Hey, Nick. 
This has been acting strangely. Missile? Oh, all right. That little creature of the detectives. Hey, I love little doggies. Good boy, good boy. Oh. What's wrong, Missile? Eek! Missile, Missile! Oh. Whoa, stop that thing. Cannibal, it's eating my... S oh, it's eating his hot dogs. My samurai dogs. Wow, he ate every single one. I'm sorry, Larry. Sorry, sorry doesn't pay my bills, Nick. <laughs> it's gonna have to this time. Hey, Lotta. Oh, cute. He yours? He's a canine police dog. His name's Missile. Huh. Canines are the ones that used to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Gertie smells like. Hmm. You're gonna set up like... Oh, I fucking should have thought about that. I had thought about that. Oh. Never mind, I'm not going to. Ha. Huh. Actually, you know what? Let's let's present the dog and see what happens. Hey, Larry! Look, it's Missile. Isn't he cute? Keep that mud away from me. What am I going to tell the big boss? There's a big boss in charge of your hot dog stand. Nick, maybe the stand is a front for mafia money laundering scheme. Maya, I think you should probably try to look at a little story about what happened. Oh, right. Heh. <laughs> My poor dogs. Oh, that's not what I'm about to do. May Maya's not slowing the slightest? Yeah. Yeah. Let's switch out for the metal detector. Can we borrow that metal detector? Sure thing, pal. I'm not sure what we're gonna find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. Oh, I just got an achievement that says Secret Weapons 3. I think it's for using all three. At least with a metal detector, you won't set off the camera until you find something. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. Oh? Nick! It's beeping. The metal detector has sound found something. Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick? Look. Huh? An air tank? Huh, the valve looks broken. I thought it was Gertie. Maya, first of all, why would Gertie be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Destroyed. Huh? Something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags? Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. What, an air tank? What about it? Larry, I want to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Say, is this air tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. There's five episodes, and yeah, that achievement was for boring the all three opens. Okay. 
must be a coincidence. There are strings of uh, flags everywhere these days. Like elementary schools. And used car dealerships. Why would I need a tank anyways? To inflate something. Uses to inflate that, didn't you? Inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. Now why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Uh, right, right. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always used was on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it. Just once. And, uh, it, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. It didn't go so well? Oh, fucking... Come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us. Fine. Whatever. It's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill up that steel samurai with that. And then... Blam. The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. Nice. I took off with my poor uh, deflated st uh, steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gord Lake. Sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Um, so the tank of the steel samurai you were trying to fill, flew, fill up flew away. Get every ladder versus step ladder conversation. Yeah, I think I saw that one too. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th? A week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out to the lake. So I wanted every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Kiyansa gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew, flew out, flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery, at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Yep, and I have to say I know exactly squat about that. Oh. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gertie for me yet? Gertie doesn't exist. Lotta? There's no such thing as Gertie. Oh, what? How, how can y'all be sure? Really, Nick? Y'all got some proof Gertie doesn't exist. Proof that Gertie doesn't exist is here. Of course I have proof. The oral lawyer with his badge would make a claim without the proof to back it up. Here's proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Larry's air tank? Lag? I know, I know. What are y'all trying to do with an air tank? This is Gertie. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here, a hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. Use this air tank and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? 
Nice. The tank, along with his still deflated steel uh, samurai, fell to the lake. At the same time, the couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait. So you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? Oh, well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. That's Gertie, and Gertie doesn't exist? Has Phoenix never heard of the F SCP Foundation? No, why would they? But the SCP is top secret. I'm sorry, Lana. Nah, it's, it's okay. You win. Yeah. If you give your info, Oh, I'll give you your info, like I promised. Poor Lotta. So tell us the information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here say, saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental? Is someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy, living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lada. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, right, so you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. Taken at 11.50. Okay. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. Familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. Hey, Nick. This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Let's go check it out anyways. Interesting little place. Meg, that you. Dude's already fucking off his rocker. Eek! Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg. Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You run the pasta shop when I'm gone? Pasta? Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. That man looks so stoned. Yeah. He pro he's probably has like several thousand different drugs in the system. With how much he's rocking back and forth. How am I supposed to keep this place running like an old man like me? Polly, the kids are home. Hello, hello, squawk. Nick, what was that? A parrot. The one on that perch. Keith. Yes? I'll leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? I'm um, based on the available evidence. I say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello, squawk! Ah, uh, yep. And he's asleep. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. A little safe. Oh, it's a safe. Mm, safe stuff. 
It's locked. Oh, he has a television in here, too. Wow, there's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny, he doesn't look like the type to keep, who'd keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a passage shop here. Look, Nook. He has an electric blanket on, on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murders? Aw, oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. Wow. What an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? It ignored me. What, you forgot Meg? You've got to call her name first. Her name? Bolly, how you been? Hello, hello, squawk. See? Neat, so the parent's name is Polly. The erstwhile companion of the, okay. Too bad all she can say is hello. Har, har, har. Old Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words. Um, a pasta shop. Hi, uh, yep. To think, what noodle will live on when I'm gone? My father started it, you know. So that makes makes you makes you to the third generation. Meg, yes. Tomorrow we'll start with the secret of do secrets of dough tossing. Dope does. You too, Keith. Yes? You'll be the best, wrang best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg, yes? You know the best pasta's always been ma made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course. Everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep this all in the family, Sherrod? This old man knows must must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Though, now that you mention it, we haven't got many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days. Darn if I understand them. Pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. This old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We gotta find a way of getting information out of him. Heck, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important. Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Squawk. All right. Hey, Polly, watch it, will you? Ha, see, Nick, all it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Look, little safe. Mm -hmm. It's locked. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, squawk. Heck, cute. Well, I just found a new friend. That's a lawyer's badge? Yes, it is. 
This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? I, yep, I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. You should do solos on Dun Catch's stream. I only did it because he was a he was away, and I and I and I felt like like I one of his one of his mods that was previously streaming, and I didn't want to um I don't want to overstep any boundaries, so I initially was just playing audio to like help keep his chat entertained while he was asleep, because otherwise it was just playing like very very faint music. I was like, you know what? Let's let's help this boy out, and so I helped him out. Nick, now's a chance to clear things up. Um, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here investigating murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Hmm. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Take over Dunstream as initial ice so you're not legally responsible for the damage caused. Uh, that's not how that works, but okay. Sure it is? No. No. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say? You too, Meg. Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know? Now, what was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello, squawk. The clown college behind McDonald's taught me all about the law. <laughs> uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? What if I use the other option? Toss it. Oh. I think I'll hold on to it if you don't mind. Uh, yep, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir. Keith. Yes? It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad, you know something about this? Uh, yep, the other night, out on the lake. Yes, yes. I know all about that. i seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Roughly 121 feet above sea level. Nice. Oh, well, I suppose. So just taking over the shop and all. He fell asleep. Mm. Polly here's my only friend in the world. Isn't that right, Polly? Hello, hello, squawk. I yep. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night, I yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang. So I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang. A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. I yep. What did he say? Uh, yep. I forgot. I'll remember it tomorrow by court time. I promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? I uh, yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing his tattered old coat. 
got himself some whiskers grown out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe she would be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly. Have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6. The bird did it. Huh? What did, what did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6. Squawk! What? The DL6 instance? Hey, mister. I mean, dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why the bird Polly know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe you should ask Detective Gumption. That's not where I wanted to go. Hey pal, long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? I actually want to ask you something. I was gonna stream today, but then I fell asleep and woke up 20 minutes ago. But you should probably go, like, Take it easy, get some food, and yeah, get energized for the day. You know. Yeah? You know the boat rental shop down at Gordon Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Oh, huh? how'd you. That was supposed to be top secret. You know who that old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I've been able to get a straight answer out of him. I said at first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Sounds suspicious. For the day, 11 p.m. For the night, then, I guess. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We each know about the DL6 incidents. That was when Edgeworth bothered died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Ms. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'll consider opening the file up. I mean, the bird said it. What's that? A parrot? The old man had about that the boat rental shop had a parrot. The parrot knew about the, that incident. That incident. DL6. What? Polly, Polly, have you forgotten some? Squawk! Don't forget TL6! Squawk! Huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man about know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get ya. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, next to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past.
Wow. It's amazing, Lee Dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DLC stuff, sick stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost in with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Uh, oh, thanks. Just let me know when you want about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Okay, summary. Well, first I have to get a handle of the main facts. Like a summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in today's, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court's house. What? Is this the same district courthouse where you we're holding the trial tomorrow? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. That would be scary like that, in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? Ha, <laughs> Rax's advertising for me in Techno's Discord was starboarded. Nice. <laughs> he said his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that he had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he's in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh. Sounds like just just a skirt case. What's going on here? You got any data on the suspect in there? That would be my, the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in the DL6 was Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, when he had to leave, when he, when when then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived. So much so that he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Where could... Oh, is... Oh, what do you mean? Maybe the old man? He may be closer than we think. I guess I generally know what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick? Are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Had to high grade. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. You know what? 
I'll continue the day. See what happens. Ba 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 ba. Number twenty-seven, district court number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who's the judge here anyways? Mr. Von Kummer, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so... Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. You are fucking stupid. Alright, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? Yes, he's the, he's the judge. He's supposed to be in sure. We'll be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I call my witness now. Uh, right. Call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Hmm. I, uh, I'm the proprietor of the restaurant at Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And uh, I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh yep, yep, I was. Wet noodle, yeah, I know. <laughs> Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. I predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Boy, I want to punch him in his stupid face. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Mm, well, uh, I'm not really sure. What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. He's like 60 though, you'd kill him. <laughs> How's it going, General? Punch him in the face, who cares if you lose the trial? If I'm going to lose the trial and get arrested, you know I'm going to be doing a flying double kick. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Uh, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well, let's hear this testimony then, shall we, witness? Hey, how's it going, you're right? Thank you for the monster truck. Oh. Oh, I gotta fucking pop my back. Oh. Thank you for that. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, uh, yep. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats, as usual. How's it going, Ozzy? Imagine. <laughs> then I heard a bang. I up. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Salvation. <laughs> oh. Uh, Pathfinder, cool. So much. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to becoming a bonfire buddy. Actually, well, I got some people here. Let me sauce that stuff. We're gonna watch. We're, uh, what? Uh, aren't you streaming right now, Donkachi? My chat loved you. That. 
Uh. Okay. Oh, hello, Bacon. Uh, your your significant other, uh, Pancake, has told me much about you. And unconscious hero is lurking to escape. Um. <laughs> Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Uh, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. I'm going to fucking suplex this man. Holy shit. <laughs> Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Alright, yes. But no! Mr. Wright, you're gonna fucking cross-examine, of course. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. We're here just to say thanks. Well, I appreciate everybody here. And, and thank you so much for allowing me on your stream. Final is a real one? No, I'm a VTuber. I'm fake. Fake as fuck. No compliments. <laughs> compliments, no! Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Dre. I appreciate everybody for being here, though. Thank you. That, that being said, Dunkachi, now you gotta play Xenoblade when you get your uh, cap card fixed. Finally, you know, G, you did good. Thanks. <laughs> people, people liked Xenoblades uh, there. Of, I, of course, I guess, because it's it's a f no 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 offense to everybody, but it's a oh <laughs> thank you so much for the sub, Donkachi. Thank thank you so much. I I, I greatly appreciate it. More to no, you don't have to. Uh, you just you just did a uh, like you're still working on your uh, your subathon. You really don't have to do more. Save your money, fix your cap card, play a game. That's all. <laughs> but still, I appreciate it. Thank you. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Very well, you may begin. Rah, excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. Of <laughs> all the people to get a gifted sub... Was it a random sub or a... Uh... I was forgot to say bacon things for lurk. Uh... Okay. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. Let me cross-examine the witness. It was the night of the 24th. Just after midnight. Yep. Actually, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna press this one. Just after midnight, you say? Ah, uh, yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were ve very rather bag about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I heard you and Pancake were talking about Marvel vs. Capcom, my favorite fighting game and the game I used to play competitively. Do you play it on stream? I unfortunately do not. I've just watched videos about it. Maybe one day I'll play it, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't get into, like, fighting games that hard, you know? Especially ones that require combos. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Don't glare at me like that. I I remembered it clearly. I did. I am. Uh, I'm gonna go back to looking out. Thank you, Bacon. You see, continue. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Actually, give me a second.
I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Why do you rent boats? Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. Uh, parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith. Prosecution concedes that we cannot pr uh, prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Then I heard a bang. I up. Uh, scare cameo? Wait, where's this? Where's the scare cameo? Oh, okay, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. And where did the bank seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Ah, yeah. Good. Continue. When I looked at the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Ah, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Ah, yep. At the time, that is. At the time? Then I heard another bang. So you heard two gunshots in total. Ah, yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window? Ah, yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the, pretty, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is rather d important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was... That man was defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad. Dead, sir, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Oh, no. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Why did he just fall over? This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I'd better act quick or this trial was going to be over. Did Karma just wink at- uh, I didn't actually see that. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you really referring to the fingerprints from Mr. Edwards' right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing uh, a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. The judge has lost in thought. What should I do? Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If you were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest... I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk tisk tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. And he's asleep.
The court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. Nor is there any need, more need, more time to defend, to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. This court finds a defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Wait, what? What? The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be a held trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Oh, fuck. Okay, good. Who was that just now? Me. Huh? What? Larry. Oh, holy shit. Okay, that, that actually got me. I was, I was... Oh my goodness, Larry for the win. What are you doing here? Listen, y you gotta listen to me. I, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. I thought it was lost. Yeah, I, I am. I've, I was fucking debated. Uh, order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. A call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. Is Larry even called allowed to... I, I don't think so. But this is a game. What do you expect? So you say you heard a gunshot. Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here in the audits, listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Not quite sure how to proceed. Judge. You've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick. This is it. Larry's given us one final chance, this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor? If there's another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Hell yeah. Mr. Von Karma, I heard to call you this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear the new w this new witness. The court is adjourned. Oh, shit. Woo. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Mr. That, uh, Edgeworth. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. All oh, right. And he found the balloon and the air tank that night? Yeah. Edgeworth? Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Um, uh, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been needing to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Well, he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of that boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. 
I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right? Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? Sorry, guys. Hold on. Sorry about that. Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has he has to let someone who has he hasn't ta even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll make this one for all it's worth. It was 15 minutes. 15. Everything's on Larry now. Oh, I forgot to dehydrate. Did I do the hydrate? I'll do it anyways. And they give the buzzer check. Crap on a cracker. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw. On the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Kummer didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about uh, this being a big break. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the back in at the rental shop dock. But just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, I've come this far, there's no way to go but forward, Nick. And I was at a boat on the lake. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay, first of all, what time was it? Oh, well, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So wait until the coast is clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I, uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back and at the rental dock. Rental sh So I quietly slipped the boat- Did I miss something? Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you looking for? Well, the witness is searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gertie. That's surprisingly close to the truth in all, in all sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat back and it went to shop dock. What time was that? Ah, uh, well, let's see. Figures out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Oh, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. 
I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. To be fair, you probably won't be able to see it. See the watch of the fog was dense? I guess? Human sundial sounds like a great superpower. <laughs> Joke's on you, supervillain. It is 11 o'clock. Yeah! What's so important about 11 o'clock? I don't know. It's your bedtime. Ah, I gotta go home! <laughs> I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> You, you, you know all great supervillains go, yeah! I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Oh. If I were a supervillain, I would make this trap trick within like 20 minutes left on the clock. So the hero couldn't pull up some bullshit plot armor move. Okay. Wasn't there a villain in Futurama that was defeated because it was his bedtime or something? You know, that sounds like a Futurama thing, but I don't think so. It doesn't sound familiar. Oh, speaking of Futurama, did you guys hear this? they're going to be making a uh, either a reboot or a new season or something like that? I'm both excited for it, but a little bit disappointed because it, it, Futurama ended off on a really, really good note. Too many hero movies stop the traps within one minute, one second left? Yeah. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Oh, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay. No problem, that's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So I only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Oh, well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty weird you watch your testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. second photo for the one bang since it was automatically taken. Oh, no, I decided to try Lotta's testimony because she said it was two. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You sure? That's what I said. Well, Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man now just said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Oh, hello, Aya, and thank you so much for the lurk. Appreciate it. Excuse me. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts? The what? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. Uh, what? Order, order, and stop that booing. <laughs> Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Kummer, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Well, of course. Your Honor, 
Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony, and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wonder if there were any way out of this, believe me. It's lonely, being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, you see. I was listening to it real booming loud, like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. At this point, it feels like the Phoenix and the Judge are doing this to spite Karma. A little bit, I could, assu I could assume so. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness says he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway. What this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs. So we could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Disc jockey. It's only being alone on Christmas Eve. So you turned on the radio? Right. I just want to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what's like that out there on Christ alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. So I was listening to an all request show on the radio. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? It's nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. We're listening was listening to radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Buss, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to a real booming loud mic. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know? And you had headphones on? Yep. I don't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I still get I still don't get why they're called disc jockeys. From what I've heard is that they're called that because A they ride they ride the musical rhythm from what I've heard. And that they control uh, how how beats are done. You know what I mean? Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. Impossible good could knowing what a radio, radio, radio DJ said to us. Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why, should, why we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask? Hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Almost Christmas. Proves Larry heard the gunshot too, yeah. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Maybe one come was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there's one gleaming ray of hope in there. We've got to press until we get to the bottom of what happened. Fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. Your Honor, that statement contradicts his evidence. Does, uh... Ah, oh, fuck. 
Somehow I doubt this is the weirdest testimony this guy has heard. Probably. Given he had to send in trouble with April, May, you probably would be right, yeah. Is it this one? Oh good, okay. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. If you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? He just said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That seems to be the case, he asked. Well, that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Sorry. Order, order. What does this mean? The two witnesses uh, heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. Hang on, the other picture was not was taken before Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. You heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Look... Look at this photograph. I'm going to make that joke every time. I hope you guys know that. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the link in this picture. Your Honor? The real issue here is why, not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That's why the photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas until Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart, Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. Is the fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight? Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises, yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed trigger the triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court if you have evidence. that's time-based is this this photo this photo 
and this autopsy report because it's either the, either the 24th or the 25th. Mr. Wright, is that a smirk I see? Uh, Your Honor, sorry, I wasn't really sure about the evidence. Fuck. I'll ask you again, can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50pm was indeed a gunshot? Make sure the court if you have any. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there are two sets of gunshots, separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at... One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? I was looking up a guide to see what present here, but Google isn't the most helpful. I'd rather not be helped out with this one. If I lose, I lose. If not, then... Yeah. Remember the case of the Steel Samurai? Uh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. Oh, I gotta scratch my back with me. Oh, good. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Ezra's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick? I wasn't going to tell you unless you wanted to hear. I was just trying to see what to do. Okay. Your Honor, yes, Mr. Wright? That's what we just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tsk, tsk, tsk. So he finally realized the truth? There could be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Mr. M Avon Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This is shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance to the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well? The guilty party has to, has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then. 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain if the two men in the boat are. It was the Rurder and Robert Hammond. What are you saying? That contra contradicts what you just told the court. He said that Robert Hammond had killed, been killed 25 minutes before this gunshot. Yes, oh fuck. 
Also, might I mention the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth, has admitted to being on that boat. All right, Your Honor. Crash and burn. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you for this foolishness. Ah, oh, fuck off. Bah, I'll ask you again. As many of the two men on the boat are. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. The murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. He assumed the guys of Mr. Hammond had met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright? Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Oh, okay. The murderer was the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The murderer's name is Miles Edgeworth. Oh, oh fuck, wait. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Now the murderer's name is The Judge. <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without uh, without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Call Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake on a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns, uh, returns the boat. Just then, as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. Hear a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he's wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And what would that be if he just returned a boat? The boat shot. Mr. Wright? What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night... I'm gonna actually save here. Caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond or called Robert Hammond to his shop. <laughs> I'm sorry about that face. Are you sure about this? Not really. How does this man get this job? Fuck if I know. This was on 1150. That was on the gunshot that Larry Heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol, pistol on the boat? Go I go here with you. I don't think anybody would. The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Bo Smith Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute, yeah? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Ah, uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot, shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. 
create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who hear, heard the shot would look in, at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next. The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... Two shots because of a aim. <laughs> the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol on the boat behind him. I see, I see. Someone looking from the edge of the lake. Oh, I forgot to say, how are you doing, Cheeto? Someone looking at the, from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once he realized that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. And threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that tra that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff? Bring out the witness from before. Oh! Techno Witch! Thank you so much for the raid. I greatly appreciate that. How's it going? How's your game? my chat behind? Oh, thank you so much for the sub. Deck 09 Raid, you are the traitor. You have joined the coven. Deck 09 Raid. <laughs> thank you so much for the sub, Techno. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Good, made a lot of progress in Witcher 3. Nice. Nice. Wait, Witcher 3. Oh, yeah, the Witcher 3. And a lot of people have been playing that as of late. I should try it out too sometime. I've never actually played it before. Are you having fun with it at least? The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Yeah, awesome. What's your favorite part so far? Very well, while we're waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, we found a singing... a singing troll. Interesting. I'm town triple trader causing trouble in Terrace Town. Man, I, want, I really want to play TTT again. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, ac actually. Yes, several days ago I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. Then do it forehead? Yeah, I know, I know. But the problem is, is that, like... The, the, I, I want to play with a specific group of people, but they're almost usually like off, you know? One more of the public. Oh, that, I, I hate the public TTC servers. Asked me to come out to the boat shop by the lake at midnight at Christmas Eve. He said he had very, something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir, Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I must I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He hasn't had the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him, quickly. We can't have allowed him to get away. Clone yourself. <laughs> that sounds like a threat. Clone yourself. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? 
One more thing. Just who the who is that bookshop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. Should I continue this? Uh, no, I shouldn't continue this. If it's going to be one more investigation day and one more trial day, I might as well save this for next time. But oh well. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Edgeworth? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Last played Gmart like four years ago, and most servers were dead then. I don't know, six. I think Gmod could be making a slight resurgence because of YouTubers like James Ski. Like, I think, I guess they would be banned for people trying to get banned like James Ski, but whatever. Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You can try to smile just a little. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right? There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. Can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. Thank fuck I made it to the stream. Yeah, we're, we're, we're almost done, though. <laughs> How, how's it going, Spex? Today has been a mess. Are you okay? Is it about the DI6 incident? Probably. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Oh, fuck. My mom had her phone stolen. Oh, shit. Just like out on the street or? I'm sorry to do this, especially since we just had a raid, but I'm getting tired. So I'll, I'll finish up some conversations here, and then we'll we'll figure out who to raid. She's very overwhelmed today. I understandably so. I couldn't imagine having some some of my shit yanked. If my day has been a mess, hers has been a disaster. Under under fucking standably so. Raid me. Are you great at streaming right now, Gumbo? I might. My brother got the cops called on him. Under what pretenses? I don't know what to play, though. Muck. Ha! I could see a couple playing Muck. But... I mean, you don't have to go into specifics if it's personal details. But, like... He didn't pay a cab. Okay. I was going to stream Skyrim, but I played it for five hours earlier, and now I kind of don't want to play it. Uh, that, that's understandable. Why don't you play, like, balloons or something? It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, no, understandably so. Like, holy farts. Damn. If you need it, if you need it, it's fixed. If you need anybody to like rant to about how stupid things are, DMs are always open. And that goes for the rest of everybody. If, if it, it's, it's not just mod privileges, but everybody can DM me. Uh, I will try my best to answer when I can, despite if I'm at sleep or 
then uh, sooner or later at work. But yeah, fuck it. I'll stream Dishonored. I haven't played in a while. Okie doke. Um, I will be reading Dunkachi actually because Dunkachi is doing a uh, donothon, and he could use the support. You know. So. My dumbass tries his best. Good. If you need any of the ammo, I'll see it out. I appreciate you, Sphix. Don't care. I would I would use that, but uh I don't I don't ha he don't think he has uh the cat catch BTTV mode. Oh yeah, another level three pride guy. Nice. So you better watch my shit stream when I need a speedrun affiliate. I'll try my best too if I can uh set it on my phone properly. Uh sure, Lee, let's 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 make let's make the raid met that the raid message. Um but I hope everybody has a good rest of their day or night, depending on where you are. Um There's a YouTube if you want to join it. And uh, or Discord if you want to join that, and YouTube if you want to join that. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody has a good rest of their day or night, depending on where you are. Oh no, my job, job. Got two cheeseburgers. Hell yeah. And I love how your cheeseburger summoned a Discord link. <laughs> um, I'm what I'm supposed to do it. Yeah, reminds me. Uh, you better hurry up. I got a little very limited time. I need to go to find some dinner. Go eat techno, Ra raid, show support, and then go eat. All right, take care, everyone.